What do you think? Sounds like you won't be home in October. <laughs> ride and a fun ride. That is the first official leg of the official Texas Slam. I am incredibly humbled right now to be sitting behind an animal of this quality. But this is a, a heck of a way to continue the old Texas Slam. Pretty cool morning here, middle of November, North Texas. Never, ever forget this hunt. I'm so, so grateful to have these opportunities. Texas, dude! My name is Brandon Adams, and I live in central Oklahoma. Married to my wife, Brianne, and we have two beautiful daughters, Addison and Brooke, uh, both very active in, in, in school and in sports and, and multiple town functions. Very fortunate to have healthy, beautiful daughters that are all, both intelligent and both very athletic. And then my wife is a, is a school teacher and has recently started coaching track, which I'm super proud of her for that. I got introduced into to the outdoor TV world back in 06 and then have been doing it full time since 2008. I ventured off on my own with my now business partner, John Christopher. We started a new company called My World Outdoors. And basically we create a bunch of outdoor content. So it lives online. We also have a television show, My World Outdoors. And you know, just doing what I love. I love, I love all of this. You know, I love traveling the country, traveling the world, filming, hunting, and you know, really just having a great time. So I try to do, something that I thought would be cool uh, in a single year, which was the Oklahoma Grand Slam, uh, which consists of five big game animals. It was black bear, elk, pronghorn, whitetail, mule deer. And I was very fortunate to accomplish that all in one year, all on video, and we made a great film about that. It's actually one of the, my most favorite projects that I've ever been fortunate enough to not only complete, but also put together. After I accomplished it in a year, uh, the ODWC in the state of Oklahoma actually recognized it as an official award. And uh, that was great and all, uh, but you know, kind of got the wheels cranking about maybe there would be an opportunity to do this somewhere else. We got to thinking about other places that we might be able to do it. I mean, the first one that came to mind for me was Texas. You know, it's my neighboring state. And you know, it's a big, large state, super diverse, more diverse, in fact, in vegetation than Oklahoma and, and larger, of course, than, than Oklahoma. So I thought that'd be a great place. And I made a, a phone call or two and then realized that they actually have already an established big game award system. Parks and Law is Alan. Mr. Allen, hey, this is Brandon Adams. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you today? Man, I'm doing it, don't know how. Dallas Barber just asked me to reach out to you. Uh, I think he may touch base with you today. Yeah, he uh, mentioned that you looked at like a Grand Slam or something, or you completed one in Oklahoma with a bow. And I guess we're wondering about Texas or something. That's exactly right. So we have the Texas Big Game Awards um, program, and it's a partnership with the Texas Wildlife Association. And we do have something called a Texas Slam, and you have to complete it, you know, in one year to be awarded. And, and then we have an awards banquet every summer. In fact, TWA banquet, if you wanted something to do, it's in San Antonio. If you want to come down and just see it, then you might get a flavor of what's going on there. It's a highlight for dedicated voters and landowners who are responsible for qualifying and entry of all four sport entry categories during the same season. Down here at the TWA Big Game Awards, it's really, really quite incredible to see the celebration of these animals and uh, the landowners themselves. So to see that, you know, there's already a, an established organization and an established, you know, award system is uh, is pretty, pretty cool. So uh, hopefully I can have a little bit of success this fall and, you know, complete this thing. So we'll see. I'm David Brimager, Chief Operating Officer of Texas Wildlife Association. The Texas Wildlife Association is a 
nonprofit private lands advocacy group. We were founded in 1985 as an organization to serve Texas wildlife and its habitats uh, while protecting private property rights and our hunting heritage and the values that steward that. When we work with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, that's our state agency here, uh, we work with them hand in hand on various programs uh, related to stuff that we do here. For example, the Texas Youth Hunting Program and the Texas Big Game Awards. You know, the Texas Big Game Awards was established in 1991 as the official hunting program of Texas. So not only do we recognize uh, hunters for harvesting species uh, such as the white-tailed deer, mule deer, pronghorn antelope, and javelina in Texas. Uh, we also work to promote the multi-billion dollar a year hunting industry in the state. It's free to enter. It's all about promoting hunting in Texas. Uh, we have the state broken down to eight ecological regions, and um, each of those regions have a set minimum net Boone and Crockett score uh, that these animals must meet. Uh, white-tail has to net 130. Uh, mule deer has to net 145, pronghorn is 70 inches, and then the javelina is whatever the score is. I forget what the score is, like 13 inches. I'm not 100%. I'm just going to shoot the biggest javelina I can. Uh, but that, it makes you a little more conscious of what you shoot. My name is Matt Ross. I'm the Director of Conservation for the National Deer Association. People think about antler sizes or horn sizes, depending on the animal as a reflection of ego or stature and that we're supposed to be beating ourselves on the chest that we accomplish something. But honestly, score has a lot to do with animal health and age and the composition of the herd. What we're trying to do is help landowners and hunters work on age, genetics, nutrition to produce quality habitat and quality wildlife out there. Generally, specifically with whitetails, uh, deer grow larger antlers the older they become and the more healthy they are. When you look at SCORE, people ask why SCORE all the time. Well, SCORE is an indicator of the overall health of your herd, and it's just one tool that hunters, landowners, land managers uh, can use of helping keep habitat and wildlife in balance. So I knew that I had to do those four, and then plus I was going to add a few. I was going to add AUDAD and AXIS, because when I think of Texas, I, I think of axis deer. I've been down in Texas many times. I've seen free range axis deer running around. I'm like, hey, that's a that's a good animal to go after. And Audad, I know that the western half of the state with the big rugged mountains, if you were to picture going to Africa hunting Audad in their native ground, the southwest part of Texas is, is kind of indicative of, of Audad country. And then I also wanted to do elk. Now, in my Oklahoma Grand Slam, I included elk, but in, in Texas, <laughs> Uh, Texas is a very, let's say a very capitalistic state. I was gonna do elk, but guess what? I could not find anywhere that would let me come elk hunt for less than 10 grand. And so I basically, I crossed off the, the elk. I wasn't gonna be able to attempt that because I just frankly don't have the funds <laughs> to, to do that. So my official slam was gonna consist of axis, whitetail, mule deer, pronghorn, javelina, and audad. What do you think, babe, about this slam? I'm excited for you to start. I'm excited for you to get it done. <laughs> Whenever you attempt a big hunt in a different state, especially for multiple species over several months, you know, the logistics involved in actually planning that is probably one of the hardest parts. So I'm going after Axis deer tomorrow, and it is the end of June. And then I won't go after another animal in Texas until beginning of October for the pronghorn, beginning of October for the whitetail, Maybe try to go after the mule deer with a bow at the end of October. Odd at the end of October. For sure, going after, if I haven't already got the mule deer, the mule deer in November. And then Havelina in December. What do you think? Sounds like you won't be home in October. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is 4.30 in the morning. And I... About to hit the road. Heading south, heading to Sonora to hunt axis deer. Very much uh, looking forward to this one. <laughs> A little nervous. Very excited. I started to head down to Texas and I made a little post on Instagram. And in all the comments, you know, everybody 
has their opinion about what I'm doing wrong. And everyone's, why didn't you include this? Why didn't you include that? And several of them asked why I didn't include elk, which is a fair question because I wanted to include elk, but frankly, I couldn't afford the elk. One guy DM'd me and said, hey man, if you're serious about the elk, I can help you out. And I was like, yeah, I'm serious about the elk, but I don't have any money to really offer. He goes, that's fine. He goes, you know, let's trade something. And so I ended up making a trade and the guy's name was Hawks Holder. And I was super grateful that he reached out to me uh, because I took him up on the offer. We ended up making a deal. Like my, fit, my first post on Instagram does not have the, the elk graphic on there. That's because I wasn't planning on doing it. Now I got an elk hunt scheduled in December. I'm gonna try to do it the same time I do my javelina hunt. Made the venture down to Sonora, Texas to meet up with Mike McKinney uh, to start you know, my access hunt, leg one of uh, this whole adventure. My name is Mike McKinney. I'm the owner of West Texas Hunt Organization, also known as WTHO. Born and raised in El Paso. Uh, love it, been in West Texas my whole life. Love West Texas and Southwest Texas in general. Hunting is a passion. I'm out here in the field guiding 260 to 280 days a year. My name is Dallas Barber. I'm the big game biologist for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. The axis deer are a unique species to North America. You know, axis deer were brought in in the Texas Hill Country uh, back in the 1930s. Several ranchers tried to introduce them into the area onto high fences, and eventually, high fences get holes, floods, fires. They escaped and they populated the area. They're not native to North America. They're actually native to, to India. They've really kind of adapted to a, a habitat type that Texas happens to have a lot of. Access hunting is one of those favorite things that everybody likes to get out because it's a, it's a year round opportunity to get out and hunting. Axis best hunted in the areas we're at mid-May through about mid-July time frame. That's when most of your bucks are hard horned and you can target the rut. We like to hunt water holes. We do a lot of spot and stock. Uh, we'll even do a little bit of safari style hunting. We are just now arriving in deer camp here in Sonora, Texas. I'm Mike McKinney, and we are about to start our Texas slam with an axis steer. So, uh, I mean, I left my house this morning about 4.30, drove down here all day, get the old bow out, make sure everything's good to go. We're gonna try to start off this hunt with the bow. Not necessarily gonna end it with the bow, but he's got a lot of, lot of bucks out here uh, hitting water. So I feel pretty good about our, our chances at getting, getting one of these bucks in front of us. The only problem is, is that it rained <laughs> two days ago and a little bit this morning, actually. My first axis deer hunt. Over the same water hole we set over last night. We set six hours yesterday. Over this water hole, didn't see an axis deer. We seen a white tail and a bunch of, you know, random wildlife. Uh, but there's a lot of deer here, so we'll see. The cold front has us kind of a little messed up as far as the bow setups. Uh, we're not giving up on the bow yet, but we're gonna get old Delilah out. We're gonna, gonna go to a new farm this afternoon. Uh, there's food over there and water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over there, get over there early, uh, take a look at the water in particular and see if they, we can you know, get something set up with the bow. Uh, but we'll have Delilah in our hand just in case uh, they go out in the food and they miss us with the bow. We can get it done. Well, just getting settled in this blind, we just made it right up against this fence and uh, got the wind in our face, blowing right from the water right to us. So I'm expecting anywhere between a 50 and a 150 yard shot. And you know, if we see something, we might be able to make a move. Uh, like if something's going to one of the crop fields, there's a crop field right on the other side of these trees. 
Oh, we might be able to make a move toward it, so. That's a fawn. Um, yeah, I got him. I got the first one. I don't know. Okay, that's fair. They're both good. Yeah, I'm ready. Are you on him, Luke? Stop him. Ready? Yep. Stay on him. He's, yep, stay on him. Dude, that was, that was awesome. Plans change quickly sometimes. Heck yeah. We uh, we actually was going after with a bow. That was the idea. But then the rain just messed everything up. It's been, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. That's a good looking buck. Yeah, it is. That's a beautiful country down here too. This is a, a nice day. <laughs> we had to do some improvising to get it done. We actually intended on this being a bow hunt, uh, but normally this time of year it's extremely hot and extremely dry. Four days ago, two days before I got here, uh, a big cold front came through with a bunch of rain. It's been raining off and on for the last four days. Cool, a lot, lot cooler weather, 20 degrees than, this, than it has been. And these uh, these deer just aren't going to water. And we've hit the last two days over water with a bow. Haven't had any luck. We actually went tonight sitting over water uh, with a gun and they just weren't going to water. And luckily we knew where, where these bucks were. We actually seen these deer on the other end of the field and they were going away from us. And we made a big loop hooked up with Mike who was sitting up on top of the, the ridge, uh, basically waiting for us uh, to get done and scouting for future hunts. And I'm just, uh, just incredibly grateful for these opportunities that I get. Uh, new experiences and new friends that I get to meet along the way. And starting this journey in, in Texas. So I actually got very lucky because JC had hunted in Texas for years uh, with this particular family and he told them what I was doing and, and what I was attempting and they were all about it. They are some of the nicest people I've ever met, the Byers and the Haynes family, their cousins. Very fortunate that they were all about what I was trying to do. Heading down to northern Texas uh, to check on some cameras, and in particular the whitetail cameras. Came down last week and met with the landowners. Uh, we drove around all day, uh, put out nine different cameras, and today we're going to see what we got. It's going to be a good day. I gotta feel it. It is two days before the opener in Texas and before my, my slam really gets going. Uh, I'm gonna be hunting pronghorn first, but as soon as I get the pronghorn on the ground, my plan is to come over here and start whitetail hunting. So uh, today, hopefully we check the cameras and hopefully there's some shooters floating around, but very, very, very eager to get this Texas slam going and very eager to see what we have on camera uh, here in Texas uh, for whitetail. So we quickly found out that there was probably more mule deer on the property of, of size, at least on camera, than whitetail. Luckily for me, Bill said, hey, if one walks out in front of you, you know, let her rip. I mean, if a big mealy walks out, I mean, is it something I could pull the trigger on? Yep. I still have to change my plans up. <laughs> And I'm like, are you sure? Like, is it gonna affect my whitetail? Like, if I pull the trigger on a mule deer, I'm like, can I still keep hunting for a whitetail? He's like, yeah, I don't care. Nope, you can kill a mule and a whitetail. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. You're the best person in the world. 
And so it quickly turned from a whitetail property to a mule deer property like that because I was actually planning on hunting a, a mule deer in the panhandle later in the month and in November. Uh, but I mean, if I have a, a, an opportunity to, to knock an animal off my list before I planned on doing it, I'm gonna do that. That is a wrap for today. I am going to drive home, spend the night with the girls. My last night for a while with them. Uh, wake up in the morning, get packed and ready to go for the pronghorn hunt. We actually are supposed to be at the hunting property right now, meeting the landowner and driving around scouting all day today. today. Today is September the 30th, which is the day before the opener. But my oldest daughter was selected to be in homecoming. And so, um, I need to be, <laughs> be there for her uh, in, in that. And uh, so we're gonna stay here tonight. We're gonna go to the homecoming, uh, you know, ceremony. Homecoming day. It's homecoming day. What is it, Dave Fergie? Addie is the daughter of Rhiannon Brandon Adams and has attended McLeod schools for 11 years. She's a member of the varsity cheerleading squad, the Lady Redskins fast fit softball team, and the Redskins wrestling and track team, along with being a member of Key Club and Bible Club. Addison Adams and Jason Key. And as soon as that's done, but even before the game starts, we're gonna shag and head to the panhandle of Texas and be hunting pronghorn first thing in the morning, so. She done look pretty out there in the field. Got pretty photos and pretty video. Now it's time to hit the road and go to Texas and kill some pronghorn in the morning. <laughs> So this hunt actually came about through a friend that I made in the first Oklahoma slam that I did, Zach Albin. I told him, hey man, I need a Texas pronghorn. You think you know anyone that can help me out? He said, yep, I got a, I got a buddy that, you know, has some tags. Let me see what, uh, what we can do. Today is a day that I've been waiting on for a long time. It is October the 1st, and we are about to really start the Texas Slam pronghorn today. As you can see, I'm gonna have my bow setting on go. But I don't know how I don't know I don't know how long we're gonna be using the bow because um, I want to get from the pronghorn to whitetail or mule deer. So which that will be with the bow, regardless because the uh, gun season for those don't open up until November. So, like I said a while ago, to say I'm excited is an understatement. So, there are a couple places that I was going to show you just how to get into. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but if we want to get on goats as soon as possible, we'll go to the west end. Okay, yeah. And that's that's the best place to get, okay. to get on some goats. Okay. Land up with the landowner this morning, pre-dawn. He's been showing us the ropes, showing us all the places we can go, and it's pretty expansive. Um, and most importantly, showing us the places we can't go. Let me go and get the spot scope out. See if I can tell what these are. Uh, breaking daylight, getting good daylight now, so it's it's time to hunt. We're still he's still showing us around. Get closer, get down to those trees. Just keep driving down this road and get to those trees, get a closer look at them uh, and see from this distance, he doesn't necessarily look like a, a buck that's you know big enough. Really not that big. Closer a guy, I got a pretty good look at him. He was bedded down most of the time. Uh, the does were looking at me. He's not super big, which I'll shoot him for the record, uh, but they're right on our south fence line. But let's keep driving, covering ground. See if we can spot something else. A lot of goats in this country. And that big buck is a big buck. Great news, we got a giant buck, really, really good buck. And uh, I made the switch to the rifle, so. <laughs> Let's go, let's go get it done. You know, pronghorn antelope, probably my favorite, one of my favorite species to hunt here in Texas. They used to thrive all across the state of Texas, from King Ranch all the way up north and then far west and into the panhandle. 
you know, this is a, a species where they aren't really related to any other animal that we have here uh, in North America nor the world. Uh, they're in their own family, um, Antelope Capridae. Unfortunately, the pronghorn are starting to decline with drought, predator control, encroachment of people. Pronghorn antelope are North America's fastest land animal and actually evolved to be that way uh, running from predators back during the Ice Age. Uh, there was a, a North American cheetah that they would run from, so you know, 70 miles an hour on the ground would keep them, uh, keep them safe from that. They need expansive pieces of property to, to live and thrive. They need to be able to see long distances. You know, they've got 10 power binocular eyeballs. When you actually take a look at the skull of a pronghorn antelope, um, their eyes are perfectly on the sides of their head and rather large compared to a lot of other species that are similar to them. This gives them uh, a very good field of view. So when you're, when you're stalking antelope and hunting them, for example, and they're walking away from you and all of a sudden they stop and they you say, okay, and, and they turn and give you that look, they can almost see all the way around them. They're really more of a, of a browser than they are a grazer, so they're preferring forbs and things like that, not really eating on a lot of grass species. Um, bindweed, if you're a pronghorn hunter, bindweed is going to be one of the main food sources that you want to look for. Yeah, yeah, I caught most of them before this event took place. They're cool with it. I think we can make a play on this group. I mean, they're they're out there. I would say they're 250 yards from the mile or from the they're in the Milo, but from the the windmill. And if we can get to that windmill, I think we got a shot. Honestly, out in, there's a big Milo field right behind me, and hopefully, this big buck and his group stick around long enough for me to get within range with the old rifle. Still right in line with the brush. I think I can do it. I think I can just belly crawl like you say, crazy low. And then when I get to the model, I can set up. I don't even think I need that decoy. from where the camera is. <clears throat> but I still gotta go another hundred probably. <sighs> Big buck is up. A couple does. They're uh, unaware of me right now. So I just gotta stay real low and get ready before they all stand up and start moving. <laughs> still at 380. It's perpetually 380 yards. Holy cow. I don't know if they're moving. I'm just getting false reads. I 
after 315 yards. Got a pretty good crosswind, but I felt like I got steady, comfortable, can make the shot. It was all in the vitals, but when I pulled the trigger, when it went off, it felt like it was a little bit low. And I'm pretty sure I just missed him. Clean, 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 clean. Well, we just went and got the truck, drove back out here to the scene of the crime. Obviously, we want to make sure that uh, we didn't hit the buck. We looked at the footage, and honestly, it looks like I hit him. I felt like I was low. I felt like I was middle body whenever the whenever the I was squeezing and the, and the gun went off. This would be a, a drastic turn of events if, <laughs> if we ended up finding this this buck because I was definitely down. So I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but I feel better now than I did. What a giant. Holy cow. You wanna talk about a roller coaster of emotion. The last hour has been that. That is the first official leg of the official Texas slam. And he's a dandy. Did the axis in June, got this. I got the, the whitetail property set up, ready to go. We'll probably be heading there tomorrow, actually. I'm just incredibly grateful right now. This is, I mean, you expect to have success, you know, cause you put all this work in, you put all this planning in for these trips and these hunts and these properties, uh, but you don't expect it, you know, truly don't expect it. And especially on this one, I didn't scout at all because these pronghorn, I mean, you can scout pronghorn, but especially when you're using a rifle or you're using a decoy with the, on your bow like we were, you know, it's about seeing them and just having the land and having the ability to, to roam around uh, with a lot of goats, a lot of opportunities. And luckily we had that thanks to, thanks to Zach. Put me in contact with the right people down here in Texas. Uh, getting packed up from the Pronghorn Hotel that we're staying at. The truck's back there getting loaded about to head south and head to the texas uh whitetail possibly the mule deer uh but definitely heading down there for for whitetail well we just spent the better part of the day on the road coming from the very tip of the northwest part of the texas panhandle coming down to kind of like the elbow the armpit if you will in northern texas and uh we are about to get to the box car. That's where the muley's been coming in at. So we'll see if they're still here and if we can find a place to set up. That's the one we want. Stealing velvet, October 1. What we're doing right here is playing a very dangerous game with trying to offset the wind and make the wind work. We're, we know that there's corn less than 100 yards box car you know, there's a big trail that goes to it i'm hoping they're all they're going to use that trail and i'm building a blind and all this burnt mesquite I'm trying to catch them going to that with this wind we got everything spread out that's because we've been on the road all day came down here check cameras and the biggest muley we have on camera was in front of one of our cameras last night well before dark. So, we made a blind. Oh, not right on top of the camera, but a good ways back off uh, to the north. The reason why we did that is because the wind's not super good for the next several days, but we want to be in the area to, to, get, to give ourselves a chance. Going back to the same blind that we made yesterday. It's warmer today than it was yesterday, but it's been warm. And frankly, it's not as warm as it can be this time of year. So, hopefully one of the big boys show up and uh, hopefully the old Hoyt and the rig as a whole and myself can hold together and make a shot. Then we get the next step of this Texas slam. We'll see. In the morning, we're gonna get up daylight, before daylight, and be setting up on a kind of a high point looking uh, at some pretty rough country. Hopefully we can either spot some deer and learn something or 
spot a you know a shooter a buck that we want to go after and bet them and then you know make a move on them mule deer in texas you know some of the fun facts with mule deer they, they, they kind of live in the same country as as the pronghorn antelope particularly talking about mule deer here on the eastern part of their habitat fringe again across much of texas we're starting to see some fragmentation of that habitat which can lead to a lot of pockets of mule deer trophy quality is definitely increasing uh, you're starting to see quite a for more mule deer starting to move a little more southeast out of that trans pecos and panhandle country down into what would be considered the western part of the hill country of the Edwards Plateau. A lot of people think of, of mule deer, they think of, of big mountaintop kind of high country habitat. While they do exist there, they exist across the, the American Southwest and in some big time desert conditions. Uh, they exist in short grass prairie habitats. They ex exist in uh, agricultural dominated habitats. So a very adaptable species to chase here in North America. I feel like we're gonna kill a deer tonight. I know I say that a lot. I mean it though. Just putting this stuff on to break up the glare off my face. Well, just getting settled in. We came in, I walked over to the box car. Where there's, there's corn over there in front of the box car with the camera over it. Pull the camera. Our four by four, the one that we're really after, has been missing since the first. So he's been he hasn't been on camera in three days, and he was super regular over there on that corn. We were assuming that he was shedding velvet, and sure enough, first picture we get of him, um, hard horn. So. He has shed his velvet. His buddy, the three by three, has shed his velvet. So now we're hoping that he returns to that corn. Again, I can't shoot the corn from here, but there's a couple of trails right in front of me that go to the corn. And that's what we're trying to, you know, hope, he, hope he's on. So we have made the move. <laughs> I've gotten back actually to the spot that Cody has been sitting in. I just felt like, first of all, I think I'm gonna get a shot. And then, I don't know, my bow's out there and I haven't had to grab my bow yet. I don't know, I second guess myself. So I moved back into this hidey hole. Uh, now I got all the cover I need to draw back. It's pretty tight, especially with Cody and I back here, but I feel a lot better uh, if something is out there in front of us, if I've been not seeing us or seeing me whenever I draw back. They might hear me when I hit one of these limbs behind me. <laughs> but no, I feel, I feel good about it. Right here, here he is. Right here, 40 yards.
and just fall. I smoked his butt, dude. <clears throat> Fucking mule deer. Dude, that's a big Texas mule deer right there. I'm so pumped right now. We picked the right trail. He walked right in front of us. And I blitzed him. I am so grateful. Thank you so much to Cole and to Bill and their family for the hospitality for allowing me to come out here. Hello. Hey, baby. Hey. What are you doing? I am making a pumpkin at this craft night at the church. I got you. Well, I just smoked that big four by four. Nice. <laughs> 20 yards, I mean, just, just drill them. Sweet. Yeah. That's great. So, I got a... You got a deer, I'm making a pumpkin. It's a good night. <laughs> it's a great night, baby. I love you so much. I miss you. I love you, too. I miss you, too. All right, Mama, I got to go. I got a lot of work to do, but I, you're the first one to know. I love you. All right, baby, love you. All right, Bye. Dude, I love that woman so much. I love her. What an incredible experience here in Texas. Uh, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful mule deer. <laughs> this is part of the, the, the month was actually scheduled to be whitetail. And we came down here about a week and a half ago uh, and set trail cameras out for the first time on this property. Uh, very fortunate to be able to hunt out here uh, through some permission, through some buddies. Buddies and some buddies, <laughs> as uh, as it would be, we found out pretty quickly that this place was uh, covered in mule deer, absolutely covered. And this one was probably one of the best ones we we had. And he is a dandy, uh, as you can see. He's really wide, uh, big big brow tines, especially for a mule deer. Good back forks, good front forks on this side. Uh, but just uh, just a stud. I couldn't be more tickle with this animal very fortunate to make a uh, make a good shot and he ran 60 yards uh, this is another leg in the texas slam and i cannot believe that it's coming together uh, like this we still have a lot to go uh, but getting this mule deer ahead of schedule and like i said i was supposed to be i thought i was gonna be hunting whitetail right now uh, so to be sitting behind a big big mule deer is uh Pretty dang special. I'm very, very grateful right now. Oh, that is a clean pass through, sir. This arrow skip just got dirt all over it. But look at that broadhead, ready to be sharpened and shot again. That's what you want your arrow to look like. It definitely did some skipping to get over here, get this far, but glad to find it. So. You know, so when I showed up to Monkey Creek, I didn't know that it was like an operational off-road track. You know, the thousands and thousands of acres where people can come from all around. I'm Bill Haynes, and I'm from Chillicothe, Texas. I farm and ranch and uh, drive a truck for UPS and hunt and fish and enjoy life. Got a wife and a five-year-old son. Monkey Creek came about from my great-granddaddy in uh, the early 1900s. My dad's currently still living, he's 84, and still has ownership of it. We started the four-wheel drive deal in 1996. We ran a couple of dozers, cutting seismic graphing trails, and we started coming with Jeeps and pickups, and it just kind of evolved. The first year, there was five of us that drove our pickups out, and the next year, everybody wanted to do it again, and it turned into 15 of us, and then and about four years later, we were, had rigs that we were hauling on on trailers out here. It was just really neat to be around a bunch of people that are passionate about something. And the same way that I'm passionate about the outdoors, these people are passionate about their machines and, and really testing them out and then testing their own, you know, mental fortitude when it comes to going up and down these, you know, crevices. And I mean, it was truly impressive what these machines can do. For a long time, we didn't charge people to come in. It was mainly our friends and, and we had a lot of people come in saying, y'all need to charge because it's costing y'all a lot of money to put this on. And 
and we rent porta potties, have food vendors come, maintaining the trails, and, and so now we charge $25 a head for the whole weekend. Everybody just loves it here because it's so laid back and you can go do your own thing and lots of trails. We open up twice a year and for the public, March and October is, is uh, our, our big event. Got here doing a little work. Did a, yesterday was nothing but a work day. We killed two days ago. Uh, and yesterday we built a bunch of feeder pens because every time we put corn out, either cows or 7,000 pigs, just wipe it out in a, in a single night. So we built three different pens yesterday uh, in three, three great areas. So hopefully it keeps the pigs out. Here's another one of our pins we built. As you can see, the pigs have been here. Still corn on the ground. The pigs have not penetrated. Uh, I checked the card. Sure enough, there was a big, nice, mature whitetail, big 10 point. So now I'm going to pick out a spot for a northerly wind and uh, build a blind. That's what I'm gonna do for right now. Uh, we got north wind today and then uh, two days of south wind, and then there's a big front coming in all of a sudden, which is when I'm really expecting to kill this, or when I'm really expecting these deer to be up on their feet, moving the highs in the low 60s, we're in, where it's been highs in the mid 80s, high 80s. I feel like I can get this deer killed. And, uh, I made a heck of a good blind today, but I'm self-filming, and that requires extra movement. I'm about to get it done in the ghillie suit. I <laughs> swung and missed on a really nice board. I don't know what happened. I, I think I hit a limb or something dr drastic happened because my arrow just dived down. Uh, so I'll be sure to check that out first thing in the morning. Uh, I don't think that anything is wrong. I just think uh, I hit a limb out there in front of me. So. We got a couple of hot days ahead of us uh, with south winds. Uh, so I'm gonna check my south wind cameras tomorrow and see where I might be in the evening. Uh, but you know, we're looking at mid to high 80s for the next two days. And then a big front is coming in on Sunday, which is three days from now. And we have just great, great, great weather uh, for the foreseeable future after that. So fingers crossed. I've been here two times now. You know, I have to have two good hunts. I mean. Well, it's 5.30 in the morning. And I am off for my first morning hunt uh, for deer this year. I've been up every morning observing, trying to learn something. Um, there's a reason why I don't hunt mornings early season. In the mornings, like right now, I'm taking a huge risk right now because I'm going to be fairly close to uh, where the corn and the water is. And if they're already there, then I'm screwed, quite frankly. And not even that is the way that I'm walking in. I'm trying to come in the back door. I could, the, the buck that I'm after could easily already be off the corn right now. Again, I'm, I'm on the road down from where he's at, but I'm still close to it, um, close enough that I could spook him. If he's already left and is walking away, I could run into him 200, 300 yards, 400 yards from the corn. I wouldn't even know it. I spook him, and now the deer's gone for who knows how long. So. That's one of the reasons uh, I'm not a huge fan of morning hunts in, in early season, but guess what? It's getting really close to not being early season, so that's also fun too.
absolutely just cost me that buck. since uh, Tim Point was in front of me. I haven't had really a chance to talk. That, I mean, there was a younger, nice mule deer. And then the a big mature mule deer came out and started pushing that little mule deer around and I just left. It's been an incredible morning, absolutely incredible morning here in North Texas. It's, uh, it's really hard to kill a mature deer with your bow. Like, really, really hard. Uh, and it's extremely hard to kill a mature deer with your bow and self-film. And it's pretty much impossible <laughs> to kill a mature deer and self-film with a bow in a natural ground blind with a ghillie suit. God, it's hard to get opportunities like that. You gotta take advantage of them whenever you get them. So now it is late October and I am about to start on my Audad hunt. I'm going to be going down on this hunt with my great buddy Brian Berkeley with Mike McKinney at West Texas Hunt Organization. It'd be irresponsible if we didn't hydrate. Hydrate or die. We're here. Home sweet home indeed. Right behind me is Mexico. We just drove down the Rio Grande River Bottom. We're actually camped in Rio Grande River Bottom. That is literally Mexico right now. Audad, Texas. Let's do it. It's best catch of my life. <laughs> it's not for my wife, yeah. Choose the best catch. So to describe the terrain and environment would be rough and nasty, but it's also full of Audad. The Audad sheep from the Barbary coast of Africa. Again, another desert dwelling species. They prefer the gnarliest, nastiest country that you can can possibly think of. They're here for, uh, you know, people were bringing them in for, for hunting purposes. And they've begun to expand outside of those areas where they've been stocked um, and are starting to, to really spread across the landscape. You know, current knowledge of, of Aldad is, is how they overlap with a lot of the biggest game species that we have, more, more specifically bighorn sheep and mule deer in Texas. Um, little's known regarding the ecological impact of Aldad. They do reproduce quite often. Big rams were shooting on those low side, nine to 10 years old, up to 14 plus years old. Really hardy, they don't need a lot of water. They can survive in tough conditions and they can soak up the lead. They again are a species that can be hunted all year round and a very popular species for people to come in uh, to our state and, and hunt. Now, Audad was one of the animals that I added to the Lone Star Slam because honestly, when I think of, you know, free ranging animals in Texas, Audad is one of the first ones that popped in my head. I wanted to try, you know, I've never, I've never hunted Audad. And so um, we had our guide there uh, that was gonna be helping us along. But I mean, he was basically pointing us in the right direction as a semi-guided hunt. Brian and I were gonna be doing, you know, the work and the decision making on our own and, and, and I was very eager to, to get after it. That same ridge that they're on, they're like, if you go up to the high point, yeah, to the right of them, to the right, uh, on the other ridge, spotted our first group. They're a long ways away, but they are Audad and they are Rams. So Mr. Tyler is gonna look and see if there's anything worth making a stock on, I would imagine. Well, my suggestion is this. We at least try to get past this windmill that's falling down. And there's some really bad cuts right here. And you don't want to you don't want to go down it and up it and then down it and up it and then down it and up it. You'll be 
Yeah. Yeah. Deep by the time you even get close. If I was to go after it, I'd go up here more mm -hmm. and then come down into that cut and walk that cut around with that little cut and cross it. Yeah. And you see this, it's down below, but it's, there's a knob right where I'm pointing. Mm -hmm. If you came up like that to him yep. you know, with the crosswind, you'd be looking right out. You just crawl up there yep. and just inch up there until you can get a shot. A shot, yeah. Well, we got a little bit closer. Got the spotter uh, a little bit closer. We got about know, five, six hundred yards closer. Uh, we're still over a thousand yards, but we could tell there's at least one good ram in the group. So uh, we, like, there's at least one good one. What we're going to do is we're going to scoot up the scoot up this road, get a little bit closer, even more closer, and then come in with the crosswind. Hopefully, with the crosswind, the wind's not ideal right now, but as is life, we'll make it work. Okay, we're down in the bottom. We're using this winding creek bed to close distance. It's loud, everything's loud, the wind's not blowing. So, might make it difficult once we get closer. And, uh, cause we're, we're still probably about 800 yards from them right now. So, we'll see. We're probably within four or five hundred yards right now. It's hard to tell. I mean, you can see, I mean, 40 foot. Well, it's getting smaller. It's probably 25 foot canyon right now. If we can just stay away from the vegetation and the big rocks, we're okay. And then I think you need to go to like two more. Okay. I'm just, I'm afraid that we're about to be, we're about to be exposed. So yeah, with these things are, are blocking us pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's about the only thing we've got as far as cover. Yep. Thank you, Brian. You see him on the far left, there's one moving behind him. Mm-hmm. He's going right to left. Mm-hmm. Going up at an angle. Yeah. Behind a bunch of lambs right now. Are you on him, Chris? Like I'm on him, the best I can get on him. He just walked in the open. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. He's hot, just skylined. Yes. Well, I can't shoot right there. Okay, that's okay. We're okay. We're okay. Yeah, we're okay. That was a close call. Really close call. We got to about 220, which is exactly where we're on the exact knob we wanted to be and everything. Um, only problem is I got a little out in the open and they, they caught movement and walked up over the hill. I don't think they're too, they're not spooked at all, hardly. They didn't run. Uh, right when they got over the hill, they kind of trotted, but I, I bet they're not very far over the hill. So what we're gonna do, there was at least one, maybe two shooters in there. Yeah. We're gonna walk up to this peak, see what's floating around. Yeah. Let's go, let's go have fun. Well, we, uh, I've done good to this point. We had a long, long, tedious stalk to, to get to here. Uh, kind of boogered them a little bit right over our ridge or right over this ridge behind us. Uh, but they went over the, on the other side in a different valley on another ridge and uh, on a hillside and settled back down. We got into position and that's where we're at right now. They're at 285. Well, they vary between 285 and 320 yards. So we're set up prone, ready to go. Uh, we, we, we think there's three legit shooters uh, just waiting on two of them to stand up to get a better look and get out of the brush because both of them are in the in the brush. One really wide one's out in the open. I could shoot right now, but uh, we're going to wait to look, get a look at the other two. So right now it's just a waiting game. We got plenty of daylight and we're set up, ready to get them. What do you think, Brian? I like it. You like the situation? I do. This is about as good of a situation as you can get in. Just a waiting game. Decisions, decisions. Good problem to have. It could, we could have a worse problems right now. So what's happening right now is we got a big group of Audad in front of us. Two for sure shooters. We're just trying to decide which one. Right now, one of them is on its feet and standing in the bushes. I could shoot it if I if we wanted to. But we think that the bigger one is up high, not the one that's on his feet. So we're making, we're trying to make that call right now. 
Bigfoot's tail. Ah, oh, that's, that's promising. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 here, oh. We go. here we go. You on him? Yep. Send it. Where is he? Dude, bruh, he's down, buddy. He's <laughs> freaking down. down. <laughs> I love it. Look at this country. Yeah, so these, these mountains back here uh, in the background is Mexico. The Rio River, uh, Rio Grande River, right there. I can see, I can see the river bottom. And then this, this rough stuff right here, it doesn't look like it from here, but it's 50, 60 foot sheer wall cliffs that are 10 feet apart. That ram is right above me in that, right below that rim rock up there. We were at the top of the ridge up there. If this is a much steeper, Side hill that we anticipated, and a lot, a lot higher. So, that's okay. It's gonna be worth it, brother. Thank you so much for telling me about your your love for Aw Dad, and uh, inviting me along on this uh, on this adventure. I knew when you came, you'd love it. Yeah, this is this is incredible. But this is a, a heck of a way to continue the old Texas yeah. slam. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely. I mean, to me, this is an incredible ram. I'm tickled pink. Thank you, sir. Dude, this is awesome. Awesome trophy. Heck of a ram. What are we doing today, bro? I want to see the big all day. Yeah? A really big one. Today. I was just seeing y'all, Dad. I'm, almost, I'm just excited to be out here. Yeah. Bay got a good one yesterday. Took the pressure off. Now he gets to uh, just chill out and watch me do it. Yeah. Yes, I did. And yes, I do. Yes. We're going to awesome. do it again. Yep. Let's do it. One at the top left is no slouch either, but the biggest one at the bottom right. Yeah. Definitely got the best chaps. See, you see him turning around with the bottom one, walking up to the three? Yeah. That's the one I want to say is a sheep. I've already looked at the other ones, he looks the biggest. By himself? Yeah, he's, he's in right in front of an Okatia bush. Just went under it. Now he's going broadside. For what? 457. <laughs> hit him in the back planks. He's like, he's hit him again if he can, right in the shoulder. Hit he's him on he, right? Yeah, he's on yeah. all the right by himself. All the way right. You saw you saw the blood? Yeah, no, Brian, you dropped him. You hit him right in the in the rear flanks, like right here. So with him being hit like that, I would he's gonna him. go lay down. 
Yeah, but I would go up this ridge. I'd get on him as fast as possible because he was a other sheep. And if the other sheep are gonna push him, he's gonna go with him if he's able. Yeah. So, I mean. You need to go. Then once we spotted him, we got set up. I mean, we're, what, 70, 80 yards from him? Then I didn't want to shoot another all dad and it, and you know, have two, have one wounded and one. But yeah, you can see the blood on his hind quarter. Two down, second day. Good job, buddy. Look at his old face, man. Look at that. Yeah. Great, man. Dude. I love this stuff, man. Congratulations. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forget the first audad hunt I've ever been on. It's been uh, pretty, pretty eventful. Yeah, he's got pretty color and like I love it. Oh yeah. Well, heck of a day, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for I'm being here. I'm freaking pumped. Now we're gonna celebrate today. Yes, got sir. a little work to do for the camera stuff. And then we're gonna hit the road and go. Get I'm gonna your, go try to get, get my white Texas whitetail, and then you're gonna go up to Oklahoma. Yep. Sam Plum and try to get a whitetail up there. We have made the mad dash eight hours to North Texas from our Audad location in Southwest Texas. I am planning on being aggressive this week, using the decoy, doing the lockdown spread, and calling. These bucks should be frustrated, looking for love. And with this setup, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them that. Stay with it. Keep the wind in your face. Good things will happen. You know, I'm gonna need you to do a little better. I see them deer, okay? This is seven days of hunting on this trip in Texas, and I've seen two does from the stand. It's been a rough, rough hunt. Well, it is 3:45 in the morning. Uh, I do not have a cameraman. I'll be self-filming and just doing what I can uh, to get it done. I mean, when you do this stuff, uh, you do it for the love of it. You know, because if you didn't love this shit, you wouldn't be doing this shit. Training. As soon as it lets up, it's supposed to let up around noon, one o'clock. As, as, as soon as it gets out of here, I'm heading to the blind. So right now, it's pouring pretty good. I'm Shane Motzenbacher. I'm a deer outreach specialist for the National Deer Association. Whitetail deer in the state of Texas, uh, they're kind of synonymous with each other. You think of Texas, you think of deer and deer hunting. This is probably one of the most sought after game species that we have across the country. Their economic and cultural importance is incredibly vast. It's over a $3 billion a year hunting industry in Texas. They adapt really well. There's nearly a dozen ecoregions in the state and deer live in all of them. And that's all in part to landowners and hunters 
and ranch managers all working to, together to keep the wild things and wild places of Texas thriving. Whitetail deer is one of the greatest conservation success stories that we have in, in modern history. They were hunted almost to extirpation uh, back during the, the 1800s. Back in the 30s, there was very concerted stocking or restocking efforts of deer across the state of Texas. Almost all of that occurred within its own borders. The state of Texas found places where had high densities, trapped and relocated deer from those areas to areas that didn't have a lot of deer. Today we know that the population is over 5 million. Uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife does a phenomenal job of managing the nearly 5 million deer that live in the state. They do that primarily through hunting, regulations, and through using private landowners. Yeah, the popularity of trophy big game continues to push hunters and landowners to provide these animals a place to loaf, breed, sleep, hide, get full on groceries and let them get that age and that maturity on to get to that trophy quality that, that all the hunters like to see. 99% of the 800,000 to a million deer shot each year in the state of Texas is taken off of private land. And that's just because the state is comprised of mostly private landowners. So working with private landowners is the main way that Texas Parks and Wildlife and private consultants and deer managers will regulate deer populations. I made this switch. I have my bow in the, I have my bow in the blind. And my release on there. It's so quiet, these deer. They're very leery of this pop-up blind I put up two days ago, so. So I should have anywhere between a 15 and 150 yard shot. It's gonna be tough filming and shooting, but that's his life. Been a rough one. I've been here a long, long time, so. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Super frosty. Super cold, low 20s, mid 20s. Well, it is about 10.30. And there was just a really nice, young buck, like a really nice young buck in front of us, or in front of me, 25 yards. That's the fifth buck I've seen this morning. And that deer's a, a great, a great deer. He'll be a phenomenal deer next year and the year after that, but um, just gotta be patient and get one in front of us. And I got the old, Well, it is 11.30. I'm gonna take my lunch and my gun and go to the truck. I haven't had cell phone service in like two days. So I'm gonna go up on top of the hill and uh, hang out for an hour or so before I come back. Well, I'm gonna take my gun just in case, you know, never know what you're gonna see. So, all right, here's what just happened. I'm like, 40, 50, 60 yards from the truck. See the truck over my shoulder. I just spotted a big buck with a doe lot down the doe right here to my left, maybe 40 yards from me. He just took off in the brush right here. I'm li literally right by my truck. Watch me eat up here. He's in the quiet and get on this road. That I'm parked on. They weren't spooked. Definitely was locked down with her. I seen another little buck with her actually. I left my big camera. I left my big camera back in the blind there at this little GoPro. He 
just dropped. He just dropped right there. He's dropped. <laughs> Thank you though. I do thank you. This is the great deer. Great deer. I made it back to the truck, changed clothes. It's getting hot. It's starting to warm up for the day. Uh, got the big camera, both big cameras actually. And uh, here he is. I mean, just a great, great North Texas buck. He's a slick 10. I mean, when you think of a Texas rack, this is about what you think of. Uh, I could not be more proud and more grateful to, to have the opportunity to, to be chasing these deer, especially animals of this quality uh, on this property. Big thanks to Bill Haynes and his entire family and hospitality for putting me up. Cole Byers, Jill Atkins for Cole and Jill for uh, helped me out along the way and for JC for introducing me to Cole and Jill and Bill and Bob and <laughs> Barry and the whole the whole crew down here uh, I'm absolutely just ecstatic right now pretty cool morning here middle of November North Texas never ever forget this hunt this whole thing this whole slam this whole whitetail adventure uh, it's a part of the slam is uh, I'm just grateful for it it's, it's, I'm at a loss of words but it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be which is good you know stay humble <laughs> try to keep you keep it down to earth now I need to get them cleaned and then I'm going up north back to Oklahoma got some good deer up there that I'll be uh, chasing for the next week and then hopefully get my girls something behind the house so great 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 special special day oh man so I killed that deer in the middle of November well, I was able to capitalize on a great buck with my rifle in Western Oklahoma at San Plum Canyon. Just, uh, just a great buck, super wide, long main beam on his left side, his right side's a little bit weaker, uh, short tines, uh, probably going downhill as far as uh, life, but super grateful to get him, big fat sucker. You know, I had almost four weeks before my next scheduled hunt, uh, which was the Javelina, and then from the Javelina, I was gonna go straight to the elk hunt. I was gonna recharge my batteries by spending some time with the girls behind the house, hopefully getting them some deer, and was able to to get Addison. She got a, she got a nice buck. Right here behind the house, 
Brooke went out, got a doe out of the same stand. We've been running around like crazy people taking care of Addison's steer from this morning. Uh, and then we had to go to town, get some uh, supplies for tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Pick up Kenzie back here in the background. And uh, I mean, slip into blind with about an hour, a little over an hour left in the hunt. So it'd be a quick evening hunt, but chances are real good. We're after Brooke's first deer, right Brooke? First, first buck. She has killed two does before. We're after her first buck. <laughs> I like where your head's at, but no, let's wait for a buck. <laughs> See that big one in the front? Yeah. You're on the one that's broadside? Yes. All right. Put it right behind the shoulder and squeeze the trigger. I believe you smoked her. I think he smoked her. Oh my gosh. It's like five minutes in. You are clearly my daughter. <laughs> clearly. This one is clearly my daughter because we came out here to kill a buck. And the first, the first deer that came out, she was like, can I shoot it? And I'm like, no, you can wait on a buck. No, I can't. And then she was like, why can't I shoot it? Oh, so I was wanting to get a buck. And then she walked out and I was like, I turned to my dad, I was like, can I shoot her? And he was like, no, let's wait for a buck. I was like, I'm gonna shoot her. I want to shoot her. Why can't I shoot her? Then I shot her. What's that? That's a deer. All right, now you and Kenji load the back of the truck. So I've been home for like four weeks and there was a cold front coming through. It was a perfect time to try to fill my second Oklahoma buck. So on my way to the Havelina hunt, I actually stopped in Western Oklahoma at San Plum Canyon. Dude, that's fun, ain't it? Late season, uh, middle of December today, and uh, actually I'm supposed to be javelina hunting right now in Texas uh, for a part of that Texas slam, uh, but I could not resist a cold front and the opportunity to chase a mature deer out here in Western Oklahoma. Threw that deer in the back of the truck, took care of him like that, and we had drove all night. Got to the javelina place like two o'clock in the morning, and then got up at like five o'clock in the morning and started driving around the high rack. Well, day one, hunting Havelina. As you can see, we're up here on a high rack covering ground. I think that's gonna be the main strategy we're gonna implement today is covering as much ground as we can, hopefully laying eyes on something and then making a stalk. So, Mr. Cummins says there's a lot of have Lena out here, just gotta find them. So, we have 20 something thousand acres, uh, and we have a vehicle full of gas, <laughs> and we're up high where we can see. So, that's what we're gonna be doing for the foreseeable future. Well, we are posted up on this little high point overlooking a uh, water tank and spot where and uh, we, we've been driving all day and I do mean all day and we've seen a lot of deer uh, but no javelina so just talking with Drew and he said that every day they deer hunted they seen javelina everywhere is that not right every single day every single day they've seen javelina everywhere so that's okay well, I just did an outro, like a little talk, you know, giving up on the day. And right after we did that, look down the down the hill, the Havelinas came out. So we have 10 minutes to try to get it done before legal shooting light. So that's what we're gonna do for right now. That's happening as we speak. See that big one's running to us. Shot him straight on, 
but I wanted to do broadside. There was five of them, I think, but it's, it was dark. It was yeah. real dark. By the time y'all got up here, I could barely see y'all. Yeah, we had about four minutes of legal shooting light. I, I checked, so I mean, it was it would have been tight. Yeah, I hear you. Well, yeah, we'll get them in the morning. Yeah, let's do it. There's actually three species of, of peccaries across South America, Mexico, and into the southwestern uh, United States. Here in Texas and in North America, uh, ours is the collared peccary, or what everybody calls the javelina. Javelina is a unique animal found in mostly arid, semi-arid, rocky country. You know, here in Texas, they are a licensed game animal, and we felt about four years ago for our program in the Big Game Awards was an opportunity for us to help promote the hunting of the species to landowners as an economical incentive for them to increase their, their hunting opportunities. Working with other state agencies, we hope to uh, approach the Boone and Crockett Club here uh, in the next few years and say, here's some data. Uh, we feel like this is a species that could be added to uh, the world recognition program of the Boone and Crockett Club. So we'll see where that goes. Setting up on this uh, tank battery on this oil pad. That's a big tank, actually. About three quarters of a mile away from that water hole and that food that we put out yesterday. Same spot where we ended the day yesterday. At last last light. A lot of a lot of half lane in the area. It's the same. I mean, it's the, the only half lane we've seen all day yesterday was right here in front of us. So, there is a good place to start the day. Uh, this is our second day here in southwestern Texas. Yesterday we had a very, very, very close encounter right there. I was about 15 yards from where I am now. There's food over my shoulder, water over my shoulder. We actually came here first light and sat here for several hours and didn't see anything. We have a feeling they're gonna come back in before dark. It may be last light again, like it was last night, but we'll take that. So we're gonna get tucked in and quiet and still and gonna have a group of javelinas out here in front of us pretty quickly. Hopefully, we'll see. shot was good I think I think I mean there's blood everywhere where he stopped or she stopped where whatever it is right here it was gonna go down right there but I got up on it and it gave me another a chance to, to shoot another one or shoot it again Ooh. that it's what you want your arrows to look like <laughs> that's the first shot and uh, very very happy with the first shot. It was gonna do the trick, but you know, the old saying is if, if they give you a second shot, you take a second shot, <laughs> and I did. <sighs> Mr. Drew? Yes, sir. Appreciate Got it, brother. Done. Yeah, it's been, I- It's been a fun time. Yeah, well, we were just uh, we were just talking about it with Garrett that honestly, I thought the Havelina was gonna be one of my easier tags to fill for, this, <laughs> for this Texas Slim. Yeah, I know, it seems, <laughs> so to, be, seems to be a common theme. <laughs> Uh, and then the last two days have been, I mean, pretty uneventful, except for last light last night. Worked out good. So these little boogers right here have been very elusive for us, but I'm very grateful uh, to, to have had an opportunity tonight. I have a lot of work to do because we got this bad boy tonight. We are heading to Elk Property, which is just two hours south of here tonight. Yeah. Elk is a unique species uh, to North America, you know, following the extinction of the Merriam's elk in the early 20th century, 
Rocky Mountain elk were reintroduced into the state of Texas. Beginning in the, in the late 20s, elk were brought back into the state of Texas, uh, the Trans-Pecos of far west Texas, and uh, the northern Panhandle. People are thinking again, mountaintops, they're thinking Colorado, they're thinking Wyoming. While that is true for the bulk of our elk herds uh, across North America, we do have quite a few elk that have established themselves in areas that aren't traditional elk habitat. And it goes to show that, that they're just as good of a, of a generalist species as white-tailed deer or even mule deer can be. Elk are, are an animal that move a lot. Um, the range size is, you know, lightest studies I've read, 60 something thousand acres for a bull, 30 something thousand acres for a cow. So they need that expansive space to roam and, and do the things they need to do for a population to thrive. A very highly sought after animal, a game species in v most of the country. Hunting for it has grown in popularity here in Texas. It's a non-regulated, non-licensed species, so it's considered an exotic. Just cracking day down here in Southwest Texas. As you can see behind me, it's a pretty big country. Lucky for us, we got a hill to sit on uh, to glass all this for elk. Trying to close out the Texas slam in a big way. Hawks, who invited me down here, and is on the other side of this little knob right here, about 120 yards away, just right over my shoulder, looking at the other side. We can see the, the east side, he can see the west side. We both can see the north. I'm trying to catch these elk coming off crop fields way to our north, and then filtering back through uh, this stuff, and hopefully we can spot them, get the wind in our favor, make a stock, so hopefully uh, be spotting elk soon. So definitely plenty of them on the property. Well, we have officially spotted some elk. They are at a considerable distance. I don't even know how far it is, but well over a mile, like way over a mile. That's good. We're going to watch them. We can see in front of them forever. And in fact, they're actually heading this way. Uh, but the main thing is we want to uh, watch where they end up, possibly, hopefully put them to bed and then make a play on them. And of course, I mean, if they come close enough, we can shoot them. But uh, they're so far away right now, it's hard to really say that that's going to happen. But we're going to keep an eye on them. Well, I mean, these are walking right at us, though. I mean, if one walks at us, I mean, might I'm as well. Turn it down. Yeah, <laughs> might as well, right? Well, and that's, we'll sit up here for a while and just kind of see what everybody does. Yeah, we got to see where these end up anyway. You can see those with your naked eye. See them? Mm -hmm. I won't. I won't, I won't regret passing those up. Right, no, I, I would like at least a, a, a small five by five or something. You know what I mean? Definitely those back ones. Shoot him. You on him? Oh, there's a bigger one out there. driving we spotted a bunch of what we've seen elk everywhere absolutely everywhere mr hawks invited me down to come hunt elk i am extremely grateful broke daylight pretty much everywhere we could see were elk 
a truck actually spooked pretty much every elk on the property. We tried to get around on them. We was driving up this draw. Garrett in the back seat said, there's elk right here, right here, right here. 30 yards, jump out of the truck. I'm standing outside of the truck. <laughs> Dude, I appreciate this so much. This is so Absolutely. freaking awesome. Nice. This is awesome. Look at this thing. Dude, how often are you gonna have two dead bulls this close to each other? Oh, he's not a giant, but this is a Texas bull though. And the way that it happened is incredible. Hawks. Thank you so much, dude. This is this is great. Honestly, I wasn't gonna have the elk on the on the list, you know, on on, on uh, as part of the hunts because, frankly, y'all state is so uh, capitalistic, <laughs> entrepreneurial, you know, uh, and I couldn't really, frankly, afford it. And then whenever you hit me up and was willing to trade, I uh, I couldn't be more grateful for that, man. Look at all this meat that we get to take home. Beautiful trophy. It's amazing. Beautiful trophy. Good work, sir. Dude, thank you. Good work to you. <laughs> hey, that is not how we drew it up as far as like just stepping out of the truck. But you know what? I don't care. You can't ask for anything better. I'm not even like a little bit disappointed that we shot it out of the truck. Or not out of the truck, but right by the truck. And then the other one that was with it is it was a bigger bull. He's laying over there about 150 yards. <laughs> The way that it all happened with driving down the road, we went from zero to a hundred like that. Yeah. Well, that's what's fun about this. I mean, it, it turns into a chase real quick. Yeah, for sure. It's open country. You can see forever. I grabbed my gun just to, to walk up to yours. And then I saw which bull this was. And I was like, yeah, we're going to kill <laughs> So now we're in the wonderful predicament of having two full size bull elk down. <laughs> within uh, 150 yards of each other uh so that's cool that's a really truly amazing hawks i appreciate it thanks yeah, again man absolutely. this is a great bull congratulations and now you and i have a lots of work to do <laughs> this is the the end of my texas slam kind of a self-appointed texas slam but this is the last animal on the list what you've done here is very special i think it's very unique it's it's a way to honor all those species and promote those species that hunters and landowners are doing good things for the outdoors trying to chase that many critters down in one season is a testament to not only being passionate about the outdoors but being completely motivated to achieve a goal. All of those animals are hard enough to, to harvest on by themselves, uh, to let alone try to do all of that. Uh, and then to try to do it all in one year is, is near unheard of. So when it was all said and done, it turns out that I had a couple animals that didn't make the minimum score, the whitetail being the main one, the mule deer as well, as far as the net minimum score for the TWA Big Game Awards. When it comes to score, it's a way for us to uh, get data on the population. It helps us give us an indicator of the overall health of the herd, the overall health of the habitat. But from my perspective, uh, achievement was still right there at the top by actually taking the animal that you were happy with and that you actually got all of the species that you were pursuing. But the hunt itself, and the meat that it will provide for you and your family uh, is significant. I'm not gonna let the fact that, you know, uh, a number kept me from getting the official uh, award at the end of the year. Uh, I know the, the Lone Star Slam that, you know, I set out to, uh, to accomplish and I did uh, end up pulling the trigger on a bunch of great animals that if before the year you'd have offered you know these are the animals you're going to get and you got to take it or leave it i'd have taken them a hundred times out of a hundred times and been super grateful for it so i'm grateful for my family for my wife and my two daughters uh for for putting up with daddy being gone as much as i am i'm grateful for all the friends that i 
have met along the way. I truly know that I'm gonna have lifelong friendships out of the out of the end of this. And and that means way more to me than than anything that might go on the wall. You know, any trophy, you know, pitcher, uh, the, the the friendships and you know and the experiences that you get with these people, that's what it's all about. Special thanks to all the people that along the way that, that filmed me. Uh, there was multiple people throughout the year. God, it's just, there's so many moving pieces of the puzzle when it comes to putting something like this together. You know, the logistics and putting together um, all these moving parts, you know, it's difficult. And to be able to look back on it with the film and, and those film producers are a huge part of that uh, is, is special. And to be able to share it with, with people, uh, to be able to share emotions from the field, not just, you know, images, not just stories around a campfire, uh, but actually relay and show that uh, is what I've done for the last 17, 18 years, and hopefully I can do it for another 17 or 18 years more. My wife asked me the other day what I had planned, you know, for the future, and we'll see.